Hey, Greg Knuckles here with stringtheory.com, string with an E, and only one TH. People are saying string theory. It's not string theory. The name of my website's a pun. It's hilarious. Roll with it. Anyways, today we're talking about deadlifting. Uh, people who have been reading my site for a while know that I have started a series where I'll be going through what it took to hit different milestones with, with each lift going in 100 pound increments for squat and deadlift and 50 pound increments for the bench press. And people who follow my site also knows that I've only written the first installment for each one. But that's gonna change one of these days, I promise. Anyways, today we're starting with the deadlift and as the series progresses, you'll notice that the advice becomes more and more specific in each installment. So this one is 500 pounds, which I pulled relatively early in my lifting career, so most of the advice is going to be fairly general because, well, it was that first big milestone I hit, so it didn't really take that much in-depth knowledge to get there. The first thing is simply to grease the groove of the deadlift pattern. I find that of the three lifts, this is probably the least important for the deadlift, simply because the deadlift is kind of a more natural movement there are a lot of things you do in day-to-day -day life where you have to bend over, pick something up off the floor, pick something up from knee height, pick up furniture to move it, something like that. Uh, however, there are very few things that you do that involve putting something very heavy on your shoulders, squatting all the way down, and coming back up with it. So squats, they take a bit longer for people to acclimate to. Uh, bench press. Um, kind of depends, I found, on people's athletic backgrounds, especially people from a military background. It, even if they haven't lifted weights much, they've done a ton of push-ups, so bench press tends to come naturally to them. Some people without much of an athletic background who haven't really ever done push-ups or anything like that, bench press tends to have a bit more of a learning curve. Deadlift, though, most people tend to pick it up fairly quickly. When this article was originally published, something that people tended to be incredulous about or was the deadlift I hit the first time I touched a barbell. I was 11 years old, I got a little weight set um, Christmas when I was in 6th grade, and a total of it was either 200 or 250 pounds, and I really can't remember, it was one of the two. I'm trying to visualize exactly what weights came with the bar and which ones I got later. I know at one point I had one more set of 25s, which would have made it 250. I can't remember if those were there on Christmas Day or if it was just 200 pounds. Either way, that's not overly important, but it was either 200 or 250. And so, you know, I'm 11, I don't know any better, I have all of this weight, so I think, hey, can I pick this up? So I went down to the basement, loaded all of the weights on the bar. Keep in mind, the biggest plates were 25 pounds instead of 45, so it was actually a bit of a deficit deadlift, and it was actually pretty easy. Um, I pulled it for, uh, I think, three, three or four reps, and then was like, okay, I can do that, that's fun. And because it was relatively easy, I didn't really deadlift too terribly much more after that. Anyway, so the reason I think I could do that one, uh, I'll be the first to admit I have good genetics for picking up heavy things, but the other thing is I'd simply had uh, a fairly active childhood. We lived out in the woods and we always burned a wood fire during, uh, during the winter time. And so spring and summer, we would cut down trees or if a tree had fallen, we'd cut it up. And you know, uh, logs about that, that uh, big in diameter, um, about that long. Mm, depending on how big the tree was, the individual pieces would be somewhere between 50, 130 pounds, somewhere in that range. And basically I spent my childhood picking up those chunks of wood and loading them on, a back, on the back of a trailer. And then at Christmas, after splitting the logs and whatnot, we had a wood pile that was uh, a decent ways from the porch. And so we'd load the wood up in a wheelbarrow, have to push the wheelbarrow uphill, and then toss the wood up onto the porch. So I would had, I guess, what you could call a fair amount of GPP for deadlifting before I actually ever got to lift weights. And I, I had always just liked picking up heavy things. So 
Um, when we were sawing down a tree, we'd start from the top, the skinniest pieces, and work towards the bottom, which would be the thickest pieces. And I would always, it, it would kind of be like a, a stone load ladder. Um, I'd pick up, you know, I'd start with the smallest ones and just pick up the heaviest one that I possibly could until my dad had to take over from me. <laughs> so, you know, that's very similar to a deadlift. And so, you know, I'd basically been deadlifting since I was five years old. So the movement came very, very naturally to me. That's way more background than you needed. That's fine. Whatever. I was good at deadlifts the first time I tried, and a lot of that was because I had very much greased the groove by the time I actually got my hands on a barbell. Number two is you simply have to commit to the pull. Deadlifts can be much more psychologically intimidating than squats or bench press can because when you actually start the lift, you know, you have to unrack the bar first, either your back for a squat and your hands for a bench. You feel what the weight feels like, and you can kind of mentally assess, am I ready to lift this weight or not? Deadlift, on the other hand, it's just a lifeless bar on the ground, and it's there taunting you, and you have no idea what it feels like until you actually put your hands on the bar and rip it off the floor. That tends to get in a lot of people's brains. I know it does for me. A lot of times I miss deadlifts simply because I don't commit to the pull, right? Uh, and that was one of those lessons that I learned early, early on. You simply have to be in the right mental state to deadlift, to deadlift heavy. And that means, you know, if you're gonna get psyched for a heavy lift, it had better be a deadlift. If you've watched my videos, you know that I'm quite a big Katy Perry and Taylor Swift fan. That's my lifting music of choice most of the time but deadlift is always Rage Against the Machine Day, simply because, you know, you can get focused to Katy Perry and Taylor Swift, as well you should throughout most of your life. However, for deadlift, you need to put on Calm Like a Bomb or Killing in the Name of, or something like that. It's much more apropos for the situation. Okay, so fast forward a few years from when I pulled that initial 200 when I was 11 or so. The first time I got my hands on an Olympic size barbell set with 45s and whatnot, I was 14 and I pulled 405 in the high school weight room. We didn't really have deadlifts in the program, but the coach just wanted us to max on deadlifts one day because that's smart programming. And so that was in October and then we didn't, I didn't really deadlift again until I started training with a powerlifting team in April or May. And so in April or May, I was still lifting about 405. Uh, however, after only four or five months with that program that was very, very focused on posterior chain development, I pulled my first 500 at the 100% Raw Youth or High School State Championships uh, that, was, that took place late in that summer. So it only took four or five months to put that first 100 pounds on my deadlift and I really wasn't deadlifting too terribly much during that time period because again, West Side Style, they didn't really deadlift much, conjugate method, blah, blah, blah. But simply because of how much work we did for our posterior chains, I put that first 100 pounds on my deadlift pretty quickly. And so that got me to 500, which was the point of this video. What it took and what I had to learn to pull my first 500 pounds. Number one, grease the groove. Number two, learn how to commit to the pull, get out of your own head, put on some rage against the machine. And number three, focus on posterior chain development because that's what you deadlift with. All right guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video and you'd like to see more stuff like this, please like and subscribe. If you've got questions, ask them in the comments below. I may make a response video. If I don't like them, I won't make a response video, but I still love you. Alright, thanks guys. Bye.